Welcome back. We are back with the chairman of the House Intelligence Committee. Devin Nunes is in the uh, country of Georgia this weekend. He is joining us on the telephone. And Mr. Chairman, you were just talking about Bruce Orr, and I want to get right to that because he becomes the central figure now in this investigation. Uh, your colleagues over on the Judiciary Committee have now subpoenaed him, and we have a date. He's going to testify in front of Judiciary on August 28th. Why is he so central to this story? Well, because what's come out now, Maria, is that he has been the go-between Christopher Steele. So once Christopher Steele was terminated as a source for doing all things like talking to the media at the behest of Glenn Simpson. So remember, he was working for Glenn Simpson, Fusion GPS, who were working for the Clinton campaign. Christopher Steele was fired. Uh, a lot of this information wasn't shared with the FISA court, especially the, the fact that Christopher Steele was desperate that Donald Trump not become president. After that happened, Bruce Orr, one of the top lawyers in the Department of Justice, kept continually meeting and providing information from Christopher Steele to who? The FBI. Uh, this, is, this is just madness. The American people need to know it. Uh, and I will tell you, like I said in the last segment, the fact that the media is ignoring this is even more of a reason that we're going to have to have more information than usual declassified. We're going to have to have, I think, an unprecedented precedented amount of information declassified because the media is just not just not covering this, this topic. And, and I'll just kind of close it with this. Don't forget that Bruce Orr's wife, Nellie Orr, who also will have to be interviewed soon, she also was working for Fusion GPS, working for the Clinton campaign. So here you have information flowing from the Clinton campaign from the Russians, likely, likely, I believe, was, was handed directly from Russian propaganda arms to the Clinton campaign, set into the top levels of the FBI and Department of Justice to open up a counter, counterintelligence investigation into a political campaign that has now polluted nearly every top official at the DOJ and FBI over the course of the last couple of years. Well, that is what is so extraordinary. And, uh, and quite frankly, it's what you kind of see in this part of the world where I'm at now. Right. I mean, the president uh, has said maybe he would declassify this. What's wrong with declassifying all of this information so the American people understand exactly what took place? Because you're right. This is an incredible story, and that is why we are doing it every Sunday morning uh, to make sure the American people are informed as far as what went on. Do you think the president will declassify this so that people understand what took place? I think he really has no choice uh, because I will tell you, you're going you're gonna to end up with a situation with half of America, including many, uh, nearly every Republican member of Congress, who will have zero confidence in the Department of Justice and FBI. And that just can't be. We have to have a strong Department of Justice and a strong FBI that stays out of politics uh, and, and if we don't get that soon, I think it's just going to continue to deteriorate. Well, and I think it's, it's like the Speaker of the House, Paul Ryan, said uh, several months ago, is the Department of Justice and FBI need to decide whether or not they want to be part of the cleanup crew or the cover-up crew. And so, so right now, I just want to be clear, they are providing slowly, but they are providing documentation. But, mm. but we're going to have to have all of this information declassified, and, and, and we really we need an investigation. Uh, into these top-level people as, as to how somebody concocted the idea that, you, that it's okay to take information from one political campaign and use it to open up an investigation on the other political on, on somebody else's opposing political party. Right. It's absolutely nuts. And you've said many times on this program that there was zero evidence, official evidence, available to launch an investigation into collusion between Donald Trump and the Russians. There was no evidence. It was all based on that unverified dossier. Real quick, I'll go one step further in terms of trusting the FBI and the DOJ again. That's not going to happen until there is accountability. Will there be accountability? Will we see prosecutions? The only, the only way there can be accountability is one step at a time, and it deals with full and complete transparency, full sunlight on as many as the documents that don't endanger national security, which, you know, from our, from the, from our committee members, we sent a letter to the president. We don't believe that you're going to jeopardize uh, any sources or, me or methods. Uh, and I think people, like I've said many times, are going to be shocked as to what went into, went into a FISA warrant to, against Carter Page 
And even more importantly, what did not go into the FISA application was not presented to the court involving the information that they had on Carter Page. All right. We, very, yeah. very concerning. Not a way to run a counterintelligence system. Uh, in the United States or any country for that matter. And it's an extraordinary situation. It's amazing that this took place in America during a presidential election. Mr. Chairman, it's good to see you. We will see you when you get back stateside. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. Thank you. Welcome back. U.S.-Russia tensions on the rise as the Trump administration announced new sanctions against Moscow over the poisoning of a former spy and his daughter. As you know, containing Russia's geopolitical influence remains a key U.S. policy. My next guest is currently in Eastern Europe. He just returned from the Russian border in regards to a pipeline that would increase Moscow's energy. Uh, decrease Moscow's energy, rather, influence over Europe. Joining me right now on the telephone from the capital of Georgia, the chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, Devin Nunes. Mr. Chairman, thanks very much for spending the time this morning, even while you are on the road. Hey, thanks, Maria. It's an important subject, and I'm glad your show is bringing it to the American people. Thank well, you. I want to get the latest on the, D the DOJ FBI situation as well, but let's start with where you are today and what you're seeing, because we've got a, a map here uh, of, of this pipeline that would essentially uh, take natural gas from the Caspian Sea in a Azerbaijan and travel it throughout Europe, passing Greece into Italy. Tell us about the importance and significance of this pipeline. Well, thank you, Marie. And today is actually the 10th anniversary of Russia's real first aggression since the Cold War. It was 10 years ago today that there was a ceasefire after five days of fighting when the Russians actually invaded and occupied uh, part of northern Georgia, called the South Ossetia region. Uh, so today, went out there now after 10 years, uh, it's, it's amazing what's happened. Uh, the area has basically been depopulated. You have the Russians building uh, small bases across uh, this, this northern Georgia region, just a, just a pure sign of aggression, and it was probably a mistake on behalf of the West. We should have, been, we should have acted uh, swiftly at that time, and we didn't. But the Georgians did. One of the things that, that they realized after that happened, you know, they couldn't, they're a country of 4 million people. They couldn't take on uh, the Russian bear. So what they did is they were totally reliant on Russian gas. Uh, what they did is they worked with their uh, neighbors uh, as in Azerbaijan to bring gas from the Caspian Sea. Well, now there's a push to get to move that gas, not just through the Black Sea, but actually build a pipeline all the way through Turkey and Greece and Italy. One of the challenges is that, that we're having is the Russian propaganda machine is actually working in Italy. The last holdup right now where we, is to bring the pipeline ashore in Italy. And believe it or not, you have Russia propaganda working in Italy. The Italians haven't been able to sign off wow. on this pipeline yet, which is, which is totally nuts. And, and you know, part of the sophistication of Russian propaganda arms. But if, if you look at it in the big picture, yeah. if, if we, the United States, we're now, we, we now can export LNG, if we can begin to move more gas LNG to Western Europe, and if you could move gas along the southern route, uh, this Trans-Caspian uh, gas line, into Italy, you now have two solid sources of gas into Europe, uh, which then, I think, really puts the pressure on Germany to not be solely reliant on Russian gas and continue to feed money into the Russian bear. And, and Congressman, uh, you know, one only, pipeline the is enough? The only way I think that we're going to ultimately take on Russia is to say, look, we're not going to be reliant. Mm. on you in the West for, for our energy. And, and one pipeline is enough? Yeah, I mean, well, one pipeline uh, from the Caspian would be good uh, if, you, if you add in our ability to bring in LNG from the United States, which we're already doing some now, but we can do a lot more. Are there any other potential additional alternatives, say, from Africa to Europe? I mean, I understand the big picture, what you're trying to do. Uh, and, and we see the, the, uh, the pipeline uh, tr transfer on this map. But any other alternatives that you feel you would need? Well, those, those, would be, those are two big ones that are both reliable and both could be done in a short amount of time. Mm. Uh, there are other potential opportunities, but they become more complicated because, as you know, uh, North North Africa is a complicated place, not all that safe. So it's a little more little more challenging. Uh, I, I I would like to just reiterate though that this propaganda on and how they're blocking the Italians from 
or they're essentially using propaganda. The Italians themselves are stopping themselves from permitting this pipeline. It's very similar to the reports that we've seen out of the United States. That people forget this. You know, everybody's worried about Russia Gate and what Russia did in the election, but people forget the the reports that are out there of the Russians involving themselves in some of these extreme environmental groups that have actually stopped oil drilling and gas drilling mm. in the United States. That's all part of this this effort on behalf of Russia to promote these kind of fake green policies so that they can be the world's one of the world's largest suppliers of gas. Just fascinating that you're actually getting to the core of it and understanding uh, really, really well the strategy on the part of the Russians. We'll be watching that, Mr. Chairman. Thanks very much uh, for, for pointing that out. We're going to be watching this important pipeline uh, from, from the Caspian Sea. Let me switch gears and ask you about the latest on your investigation into the State Department and what has taken place in the FBI and the DOJ. The president uh, wrote a tweet this weekend basically suggesting that maybe he is open to de declassifying, something you've asked for him to do, and you've said it many times on this program. Yesterday, he said this. Why isn't the FBI giving Andrew McCabe text messages to Judicial Watch or appropriate governmental authorities? FBI said they won't give up even one. I may have to get involved, he wrote. Do not destroy. What are they hiding? McCabe's wife took big campaign dollars from Hillary people. So, Mr. Chairman, you've said that many times. You want the president to declassify this information. I asked the president this straight away in my interview with him about a month ago. Listen to this. Any comments on Peter Strzok and these testimonies that we're seeing, Rod Rosenstein, uh, Christopher mm. Ray? Uh, why don't you just direct your subordinates to get those documents over to Congress? Are you going to do so, it? So I have this country running like a top. Mike Pompeo is doing great. We really have a great group of people. The one thing I want to stay uninvolved in, at least for now, I may get involved. Okay. But I've been told by so many people, don't get involved. You know, Congress other people got documents. involved, and it's not good. And they'll get the documents, and it's getting, and they're getting them, and they're great people. So, Mr. Chairman, that was on July 1. The president tweeted out this weekend, I may have to get involved. What's changed? Well, just the slow rolling by DOJ and FBI. I think it all gets back to the big picture here, which is there's, there clearly was shenanigans going on in this, in how you opened up a counterintelligence investigation into a political campaign with no intelligence, it looks completely abnormal, to say the least. Uh, you've got, you know, we've seen these these documents, and we want them released to the public, and because we the public needs to understand that and make a decision whether or not we're going to continue to operate and use our counterintelligence capabilities to target political campaigns, because if it's allowed to continue like it happened in right. 2016. You have a country that effectively falls apart, yes. where you, you've politicized our intelligence. Hold, hold on so, one moment. Hold on one so second. The president Dan. needs to get yeah. this needs to get this done sooner rather than later, and Did, that doesn't. And I'm sure you're going to ask me about this too. But yes. You also have the media that's in on this, mm. and they've totally ignored the big breaking news this week, which yeah. is one of the top DOJ attorneys, the assistant to Sally Yates, who's the deputy attorney. Attorney General and yeah. also assistant to Rod Rosenstein. Hold on one second. Was in the middle of all of this, acting as a the guy, the name is Bruce Ford. Right, Devin. Devin Nunes. Uh, hold on. We're going to. I want to ask you about uh, uh, Bruce Ford in a moment.